We are going to begin with William Wordsworth Preface to Lyrical Ballads. But before we begin with the textual reading of Preface to Lyrical Ballads, it's important to look at the backdrop, to look at the settings, to look for the reasons and conditions and the factors under which this kind of work emerged, which is regarded as one of the seminal works in the tradition of literary, literary criticism. So what is Romanticism? Romanticism was not just a term used in the literary and cultural discourses. Rather, it was a multi-dimensional movement of the early 19th century, 19th century that had its variations in various art forms and that also generated a wide-ranging responses from both its practitioners and its critics. It was a multi-dimensional movement. For example, in Germany, it was seen more as a philosophical movement in the Age of Enlightenment, which primarily referred to or which focused on or which emphasized on the need for emotional awareness, the need for emotional self-awareness as a prerequisite, as a precondition upon which the society's improvement can be thought of or the betterment of the overall human society can be predicted. It was also in philosophical and other uh, branches of knowledge was seen as an important seminal work. In philosophy and literature too, it was seen as a kind of revolt, a reaction against scientific rationalization of nature, as during the age of reason, everything was rational or too much emphasis upon rationality not only throttled the creative freedom, but also left little room for the freedom of human spirits. And all aesthetic experience, the primary source of all aesthetic experience is nothing but the beginning of strong emotion. As far as the people of England were concerned during the 17th century, they even, even these uh, people have to face or they had to undergo the ordeal of change as English society during 1750s were undergoing a lot of political and social changes. This ordeal of change first of all included the shift from agricultural societies where the wealth resided, the wealth and power resided in the uh, aristocracy, in the land uh, holding aristocracy. Now it was shifting to the modern ones, that is the modern industrial nation. So from these land holding aristocracy, the people of England were moved forcefully to the industrial, the modern industrial nation. And the people of England faced this ordeal of change, not just in the, uh, in the political sense, even at the home front, at the level of uh, uh, local issues, it faced a lot of changes, it faced a lot of uh, resistance from, uh, from the then government, it was clearly a revolt against its rulers. As far as the Romantic poets are concerned, they were also heavily influenced from the uh, philosophers of the neighborhood. They were largely in influenced from the philosophies of Immanuel Kant, Frederick Schrilling, Manuel Kent, for example, said that aesthetics arises from a faculty of disinterested judgment. And Frederick Schilling said, nature is unconscious mind and mind is unconscious nature. And all other intuitive modes of thought, for example, of dreams, of incohate longings, of hallucinations, nights, moonlights, uh, melancholic sense of loss, the sense of uh, 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 lacking, all these romantic motives somewhere find uh, somewhere found their echo, somewhere found their um, origins from these German philosophers. The French and American Revolution were important matrices whose work, whose ideas, these Romantic writers embodied in their own work. The work of Thomas Paine, P-A-I-N-E, -E, The Rights of Man, then uh, Edmund Burke's Reflection on the Revolution in France, that was published in 1790, then most important work that has considerable that was uh, regarded as having considerable influence on William Wordsworth and Shelley both was William Godwin's Inquiry Concerning Political Justice, 1793, and Rousseau's On Education, which was uh, more about uh, the diatribes against the oppressive world of the adults. Rousseau in his work explained the child as the seat of creativity and genius and for the first time in Western history importance was being placed, importance was being attached to not the attainment of reason and adult self-control, rather on a kind of freedom from the tradition, on the natural and the innocence of the child. So the ideas of French Revolution, of people proclaiming independence from their rulers, 
to the alternative worlds of imagination or to the alternative worlds what imagination of what imagination could bring became the motto or became the catchphrase of of uh, of french revolution for the masses and in fact william blake very famously in his work uh, the marriage of uh, heaven and hell he says that what is now proved was once only imagined and in fact the, major the majority of modern day ideas that we see today that is of uh, liberty versus domination or individual freedom versus social responsibility tradition versus change past versus present innocence versus experience man versus uh, nature all these ideas all these ideological binary structures had their origin somewhere in the romantic period of english literary history so all these external conditions all these external factors somewhere brought about an appeal to the people for the collapse of the old regime and necessitated a system of change.